How's it going, Chip Tribe? It's me, Chips, and I know it's been a little while, but I am pleased to finally say welcome to the penultimate episode of the Chip Tide Show Season 1. This, folks, is a very monumental occasion. I mean, you only get one chance to make the second to last episode of your first season of your video game review show. I mean, come on! And this being such an important episode, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't pick a game that fully encompassed the magnitude of the occasion. Perhaps a widely beloved masterpiece like Zelda or Mario. Or maybe take the time to shed some light on a hidden gem, criminally forgotten by the sands of time. Yes, yes, I can see it now. This could be my magnum opus episode, perfectly complemented by a truly spectacular game. Nope! Buckle the hell up, Richard, because today we're playing Jeep Thrills. I can explain. Look, I get that literally none of you have ever heard of this game before. And yes, this game is strange, bizarre even, but it is such an enigma that I felt the need to share it with the masses. You all must know the truth behind Jeep Thrills, for better or for worse. But despite the fact that I've played more of this game than anyone else on the planet, I refuse to say for certain that it really exists. That it hasn't been just some figment of my imagination all this time. Do you want to know how I came to own this game? Yeah, same here. Allow me to weave you a tale. It seemed a day like any other. A friend of mine was over to play some Wii games. He began perusing my shelf looking for something to play, and then he said four words that would change my life forever. Hey, what's Jeep Thrills? At first, I thought I had misheard him. Surely, the phrase Jeep Thrills was not one ever meant to be uttered by mankind. And besides, I had never purchased such a thing in my life. And yet, when he showed it to me, there it was, clear as day. There was only one explanation. Only an act of God could bring a game such as this to my shelf. An act of God or devil. We were young, naive, and foolish, so we just laughed, but our curiosity got the best of us. We popped the disc in, booted it up, and began to play. And what happened next? Well, it would change the course of history forevermore. Yeah, it's basically just a crappy Jeep-themed racing game for the Wii. Yet despite that, there's something about this game that utterly fascinates me. What I wouldn't give to be a fly on the wall when this game was made. Because this is how I imagine it going. Some suit over at Jeep walks up to a couple of new schmucks that just got hired and is like, Hey, you three, kids these days, they like them newfangled uh, video games, right? Uh, yeah, I guess, boss, great! Here's $20. I want a Jeep game on my desk by 5 o'clock. Uh, boss, I don't think that... All right, good chat. Now get to work, or you're fired. I almost feel bad making fun of this game if that's the case. But I'm gonna do it anyway. But enough beating around the bush, I hear you saying. Let's just play the darn thing already. Okay, if you insist. Now... I've gone on record before saying that graphics matter literally zero to me. And that's lucky, because if I cared even one bit about how a game looks, I'd have thrown this thing in the nearest incinerator the moment I booted it up. Because, I mean, come on, just look at this title screen, it's, oh, it's, it's just so, mm. oh, Richard. Richard, get this thing off my screen! Think of the children watching, spare their innocent eyes! And the actual game isn't much better. Tell me, how can you make the sight of a pristine lakefront filled with lush greenery make me want to hurl? This, my friends, this. I get that Jeeps are known for being 
all terrain, driving through dirt and mud and stuff. I think. I don't know much about cars. But did you really have to go all in on the brown? Hey, but like I said, I don't care about how bad the graphics are. For me, gameplay is king. Well, I got some bad news for you folks. Literally the only thing you can do in this game is drive, and the driving sucks. I really don't know how to explain it. This game feels less like you're driving a car, and more like you're driving a hovercraft that is somehow also a tank. But like, a 10 foot tall hovercraft tank that feels like it's about to tip over at any moment. A 10 foot tall hovercraft tank that's on the freaking moon. I don't know how it's possible for something to feel simultaneously so heavy and virtually weightless, but thanks to Jeep Thrills, my eyes have been opened. Every time you take a turn, the car fishtails like crazy, and whenever you go up a hill or something, you float delicately back to the ground, and yet when you hit anything, it reacts like a bomb just went off. And when I say anything, I mean anything. Sure, you turn too late, or at the appropriate time, and accidentally drive off a cliff or something and run headfirst into a concrete wall, yeah, you're gonna stop. But what about hitting the side of a flimsy building? Oh, I'm sorry, did I say flimsy? I meant indestructible. What about a wooden fence acting as a guardrail? What? You're telling me you thought that a car would be stronger than a couple of 2x4s? Fool! Or how about simply driving a little too close to the curb? Not even like head on, I mean like you're still driving straight and then you happen to drift to the side a bit. Do you know what happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object? The curb wins. And I've already talked about how bad the driving the game is, so yeah, you'll be hitting those curbs a lot. Hey hey, but I hear what you're saying. But chips, all the different cars have different stats, so just pick the one with the best handling and you'll be good. Oh, none of you were thinking that? Well you should, because that's a logical assumption to make. A car with better handling should be easier to drive, that's how it works. Ah, see, but there's the catch. That's how it usually works, but Jeep Thrills doesn't work. So, the cars with the best handling are the hardest to drive, and the ones with next to none are... Well, I mean, it's still pretty bad, but it's manageable. But what would a racing game be without a good selection of tracks to race through? And if you're looking for a bunch of, um, uh, varied locations, then you're in luck. With Jeep Thrills, you can drive through such scenic locations as a generic desert. Apparently an airport even though there's no planes or anything. Or that dam that I already talked about. Or how about a Soviet shipyard? This ice place that I can't unlock? Or the Valley of the Gods? Because the first thing I think of when I see Jeeps are communists and gods. Now apparently, each of these areas has several tracks that you can unlock, but the problem is that to do that, you have to beat the races in solo mode. Seems simple enough. Me and my friend spent more time than we probably should have racing each other, and we thought we had a pretty good handle on the whack controls, so we gave it a shot. And we got smacked. The CPUs are the greatest drivers that have ever existed. They take every corner perfectly. Never touch the curb. Never make mistakes. It feels like they're all driving actual cars and you're driving a potato. We tried and tried and failed every time. It's impossible. These guys are just too good. Eventually... We just had to accept the fact that we would never lay eyes on those other tracks. Never touch our tires to the ice of the mythical snow level. Never get behind the wheel of the Jeep Willys. It sucks, but that's just the way of these things. <laughs> oh, you thought it was that easy? That I'd just give up? No. See, there's one little aspect of this game that I neglected to mention. It's a Wii game, so you already know it's got motion controls. But it doesn't just have motion controls, it requires them. And of course, it's a cheap license game, 
so the controls barely work. What? You think that's a problem? I think you're forgetting who you're talking to here. I have proved time and time again I am the king of motion controls. It doesn't matter how bad. If the controls don't work, I just work harder. If I have a Wii Remote in my hand, I am unstoppable. Nobody can touch me. Not even these mechanical menaces. They are worthy adversaries for certain, but in the end, they are mere mortals. They can be defeated, but me? This is my valley. I'm like Neo from the Matrix, I am the one. I will race, I will learn, I will adapt, and I will perfect. I don't care if it takes 10, 20, 100 tries, I will conquer them. I will prevail. Yes! Bow before me, Jeep Simpletons! I am your god now. I stand above you with the Jeep Willies as proof. There is no moat control challenge too tough, no Wii Remote shaped hurdle too high. They thought they could knock me down, but I will always waggle my way back up. But if I can get serious for a moment, the Jeep Willies wasn't the only prize that I won. While in the throes of that last race, I realized that I was right from the very beginning. Jeep Thrills is not a game. Placing it in the same category as something like Zelda or Mario would be terribly ignorant and disrespectful. To Jeep Thrills! This is not a game, it is a work of art, a masterpiece, a divine miracle. I thought going into this episode that I would just poke some fun at the game, make a couple of jokes, and then call it a day. I was not expecting for the game to change me, to be so humbled by it. So to those three schmucks at Jeep who made this game in an afternoon, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. For if I am indeed the king of motion controls, then Jeep Thrills is my crown. And with that, I- So, we meet at last. What the- wait. You. Mr. Chips, you have evaded me for far too long. The time has finally come. Time for you to back up everything you've said. What are you talking about? Who are you? What? You know where to find me. Our fates will be decided there. Richard, pack your bags. We're going to the finale. <laughs>